I was asked to say, how will kids learn music in the future? And the interesting thing is that today, kids don't have to even learn music in some ways because they grow up with it in their ears. From the very earliest ages, the kids are wearing earbuds and they're playing on iPods and on other things, music that's coming to them from all kinds of sources. So those kids who are musical are absorbing it from a very early age. How do they get to perform it? How do they get to make music? That's what's changing a lot. In the past, to get the musical ideas out of your head, you had to learn an instrument. And to learn an instrument is a lot of hard work training your fingers, or if you're learning to sing properly, you have to train your diaphragm. These days, with computers, with programs like GarageBand, with other things, it is so much easier to do the physical part of taking the ideas in your head and putting them into music that comes out. So that then, when you can do that more easily, Music teaching becomes about not physical stuff, it becomes about being musical, about what good music is, about how you reach people emotionally, about how you do melody and harmony and rhythm. And then the next part is working together. And what the kids realize at a very, very early age these days is that they are networked around the world to each other so that you don't have to be in the same room with somebody. You can be, it might be nice to be, but you can make music with anybody around the world in real time. And we have plenty of bands and plenty of things that already exist where people are playing music collaboratively across borders, around countries, in different schools, in different parts of the world. That's only going to continue. The tools, your voice will become all the instruments. We now have voice controllers coming in so that you can think music in your head and it can come out very easily of your body, much more easily than in the past. And in the future, we'll probably be connected by brains so that my musical ideas will come right into your head and we can share music together both internally and there'll be very easy ways to share it with the world. I'm incredibly optimistic. I think that, that it make, technology makes things easier and easier and easier. There are some problems, of course, the electricity sometimes may go off or something happens, but we fix those problems and we move on. And in general, no matter what technology you look at in the world, it's making human lives better. It's making us healthier. It's making us smarter. It's making us more scientific. It's really improving our lives. There's no way you can look around at the technology and say our lives are not better than the people who came before. And that's going to continue and continue and continue. And we may resist and see some little hitches along the way, but in general, the world is getting better and technology is a huge part of it. One of the things that's happening is that machines are becoming very important in our lives. And in fact, what we are becoming, like it or not, is a human machine society. It's a symbiosis where we combine what humans do well, and there are many things that only humans can do well right now, with what machines do better. But we need to know how to make the machines do what we want them to do. And that is my definition of programming. Whether you do it by saying to the machine, do this, whether you do it by writing some code, whether you do it by some combination, whether you do it by talking to Siri on your iPhone, you are making the machine do your bidding. And we all have to be able to do that in the future.